Looking for the champ. Champ's here. Champ's here. What's up, brother? How are you? Good, man. How about you? I'm doing good, man. Congratulations. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much. How you feeling today? Uh, a little busted up, you know, but uh, feeling good. Feeling like the champ. Yeah? Yeah, man. There's a bunch of bumps and bruises. When you fight like that for 25 minutes with these caliber of guys, you got hitting spots you don't even know you got hit in, you know? Yeah, I guess it doesn't really feel like a massage, does it? No. It looks <laughs> like, uh, yeah, not at all. <laughs> Not even a bad massage. Yeah. Uh, how are you celebrating, man? Dude, I'm not really doing a whole lot, honestly. I uh, took my daughter to the zoo today. Um, that's about it, really. Yeah. Does she know that? Uh, does she know that Dad uh, is a champion? Yeah, dude. She knows, man, and it makes <laughs> me feel so good. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, like she, she calls the belt the belt. You know, she said, that's daddy's belt. Every time she walks by, she points to it. That's daddy's belt. It's so pretty. She like, <laughs> dude, she, loves, she loves it. Bro. Makes me feel so good. I bet, man. Um, now, do you find yourself uh, recovering or do you find yourself like thinking about training? Like what kind of, like what's going on like in, in, in sort of in your head a little in that stuff? Right now, like I'm just kind of seeing what uh, pain's going to stay longer than a few days what what what's not and uh you know i'll get what what's not going to go away in a few days i'll get it checked out by a doctor get some mris done but i feel pretty pretty healthy and then uh, i kind of the good thing about this fight is i know my next step for the for most of my career i didn't know the next step after fights now we know we're going to fight khabib to unify the belts uh and he's suspended until september i believe so i know i'm probably not going to fight until september so that gives me like a little peace of mind that a fight's not going to pop up on me. I can kind of start planning uh, accordingly to, to, to that timeline. Yeah. Now, do you, would that happen in September or do you, uh, it could happen after that? Do you have a say so in that? How does that kind of work? No, nah, I believe uh, it's, it's, he, you know, it, Khabib's the undisputed champ. So him and the UFC, I guess are going to f- figure it out, but his suspension ends, I believe in September. So that doesn't mean he, he can't start a training camp before then, you know, he could be ready to go as soon as the, the day the suspension ends. So, and that's what I've heard floating around that, that September is the date they're going to plan the next fight. Wow. Wow, man. Um, are you worried about like, uh, I know a lot of these fighters, uh, or it seems like I'm learning anyway, that a lot of, a lot of the fighters, like as they, you know, once you become a champion, once you get a belt, that a lot of the media obligations become more pertinent, especially and more uh, just uh, you have a lot more obligations to the media around fight time uh, and that it can drain a lot of fighters. Do you worry about any of that? I don't really like think about it that much, sit back and worry about it. But now that you're mentioning it, bro, this last fight, the lead up to this last fight, I mean, uh, I was nonstop uh, interviews, nonstop going to different places on fight week, which I usually don't, you know, that's new to me every now and then on a fight week, I'd go to like a radio station here and there. But this time my whole itinerary was just full of uh, interviews and places to be. It made the week fly by really, but it it is a distraction and a little bit of stress. Yeah. Did, um, you, you said in an interview, Dustin, man, that just one of the neatest things I'd ever heard. And you said 25 minutes to make life fair. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, brother. Um, Teddy, I was listening to a podcast, one of Teddy Atlas's podcasts. I don't know if you know Teddy Atlas is. He's a legendary boxing trainer, been around a long time, was one of the first guys to train Mike Tyson Mm -hmm. uh, under Customato. Just a a very, very interesting mind in combat sports. When I listen to the guy talk, like, you know, he just very well spoken about, about feelings and things that fighters go through and stuff. But on this podcast, he was talking about in no other time in life or in history do you have an opportunity to raise your arms up in the air and be called the best in the world, the champion of the world, no matter what, uh, it's uh, except in fighting, you know, and, and that's what I was looking at coming into this fight is 25 minutes, no matter fights that I've lost in the past, what the odds makers say, people who told me I'm not good enough, um, you know, just every time I've slipped and fell or every critic out there every opinion out there i had 25 minutes to mute that out yeah and 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 in my own hands i had control of my destiny and and i knew i had it for 25 minutes and that was very powerful going into that fight just knowing that and i wanted to leave all of myself out there uh give it my all 
And whatever was going to happen was going to happen. But I walked into the cage that night comfortable, knowing that I was prepared to do everything that I had physically, you know, everything possible of myself. I was willing to, to do it, whatever it took to, to win that belt and make life fair for 25 minutes, man. Wow. Yeah, man, you hit the ring. You were just, you were feeling good. That James Brown hit the scene, man. It was, uh, God, that was live, man. When Now, when you're backstage, the fight before you guys was... Jesus Christ, man. Were you watching that? I was, uh, so there's, there's, in the locker room where you warm up, there's a big mat, you know, to warm up on and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, there's a TV there streaming the fights live. So you kind of know where you're at. You know, I knew I was the main event. So the co-main's going, I can, right when it ends, I know I have about five or six minutes where they come get me and say, okay, you're, go you're walking now. So I was kind of keeping an eye on it, but I didn't get to see every round you know i was warming up and kind of just glancing at it so i need to go back and watch it i haven't yet man it was powerful i mean it was just at that point yeah i was just like i'm sitting there in the stands like jesus i can't imagine that there's gonna be more fighting like it was just those yeah. guys had murdered each other dude how, how let me interview you how was your first trip to a, a fight oh it was scary man i was swinging my arm i almost knocked my date out one time uh <laughs> so that was kind of alarming um how what man it was uh it gave me a whole different respect for for uh for fighters like even just a minute ago when you said that they come and walk you from the back out there five minutes off that to me feels like an electric chair like they would be walking me like dead man walking you know like <laughs> to the it's last honest, moments man. To, to be honest with you and, and you know, uh, fighting, everybody thinks guys are tough guys. You know, I, I'm a bad dude for sure. I, I can fight. I'm one of the best in the world and I know like what I'm capable of, but I'm, I'm not immune to those feelings. I'm scared to death back there, even though I'm so prepared and, and, you know, put in so many years and months into this single training camp to fight this one guy. Yeah. Like I, I, there's still the, uh, the unknown out there. I don't, anything could happen. I know I'm human. If I make a mistake and get kneed in the face, I know I'll get knocked out. Right. So in, in a weird, in a weird way, as they come get you and say, all right, Dustin, you're walking. It's almost, you feel like you're being led. Uh, I don't want to say to slaughter, but you're being led to a crowd full of people. And you're about to step in the, in the, you know, in the arena and freaking, you know, it, it feels like you're going out there to fight to the death. That's what it feels like to me. Wow. Does it, um, is there, uh, can you feel the crowd when you're out there or is, are you just so, you guys are just so zoned in to what you're doing? You know, earlier in my career, I, I could, uh, everything was muted out. It was just, I was so much adrenaline pounding that I could only just react and do what I was doing. But now as I've got so many fights under my belt, I can hear everything, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. so interesting, man. It's like, if, if it's like it's like Christmas, but Santa's like trying to beat the fuck out of you. You know, that's what it kind of it was like the vibe it, that it kind of seemed for me. Like if I was a, I, I can only imagine if I was in your shoes, it would be like so exciting because you're ready. It's there. You've been waiting for it. But then you got to like, you know, Santa's not bringing gifts. dude. He's bringing an ass whooping, you know? Right. Right. And he's fucking mad. <laughs> and he's mad. Um, uh, not, it, it is kind of like that. You're so excited. You're like anxious to perform. You've been working. You want everybody to see what, what level you're capable of, of fighting at. You want to show everything you're, you know, everything yeah. you've been working on. But at the same time, it's still like, oh my God, we're, we're doing this and we're fighting. Anything could happen. Um, it was, know, but that's like when you're, when you're a young fighter, you don't think about those things. I think those are the things that come along with time and, and maturity in the sport. Like when I was young, I never thought about the, you know, the possibility of, getting hit near the elbow and split in the face or knocked out. I just didn't think about those things. I was just going out there to fight. But as you get older, you're like, okay, you know, you've seen some things and been some places. You're like, this is dangerous, man. Right. This is dangerous. <laughs> um, now, a lot of these guys, so you, do you know that you're going to have this next fight against uh, Khabib? It's not for certain yet, but it's close. Yeah, man, you know, nothing's for certain in mixed martial arts. Nothing surprises me anymore. I, I don't know, but I don't know what's going to happen, but the the plan is to unify the belts. Uh, Dana told me that. Dana's publicly said it, and uh, you know that's what I think should happen. And yeah. Will. Yeah. Do you worry about a lot of those guys from certain parts of the of the world? You know, and I'm not naming any, but like Dagestan. You know, uh, they use like performance enhancing drugs and stuff. Do you worry about that kind of thing? Um, you know, USADA is pretty pretty tight, man. We were 
Olympic drug tested year round by USADA. Mm -hmm. um, just this last just this last week in Atlanta, I was tested twice. Wow. One urine test, one one blood test, and I was only there for five days. So uh, you know, they do very strenuous testing year round. So I think they cleaned up the sport. You know, I just I just hope they uh, it's an even playing field. You know, that's what I hope. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want it to be fair. Yeah, they, I would have tested positive for being a straight bitch in the audience, dude. I was fucking so scared, bro. Some people got hurt. I was praying for people. I texted the police at one point. Like it was getting, uh, it was crazy, man. Man, bro, it was so crazy, man. Just, dude, I would think, and there were certain moments where I was like, oh, just get to the end of the round, and then you have to fucking do another round. <laughs> Dude, I know, I know, man. It, when that last, when the fifth round came up for my fight, when I got off the stool, I was fucking excited. I was like, all right, now I can just do it. You know, I can leave everything out of there. I don't have to conserve. I don't have to worry about anything. We got five minutes left to find out who's the best. That was yeah. an exciting time, you know, knowing there's five minutes left to this battle. Yeah, it seemed like, um, I mean, you just came out. Dude, I woke up in the middle of the night and watched the whole fight last night on YouTube again. And it's so much different watching it in person. It's so much more intense than watching it uh on, on television or on tape um that's what that's what you know, that, that's that's what i try to tell people who've never been to a live event like watching even boxing any combat sport uh watching it on tv you can hear the punches land but you don't get the impact feeling and you don't feel the energy when you're in there especially how close you are man you were down there commentating the fights and uh yeah you just feel the the energy and the force and you can see the aggression and the sweat and blood flying it's just a totally different feel for watching fights that close Bro, I'm scared. I, suddenly, I got scared again right now. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was everything, man. And seeing when you got that belt, man, just how, yeah, I mean, just paid in full, man. It just, it, it you could just see it. You could just see it all right there for you, man. Uh, that must have just been, uh, what was that like? It was, uh, you know, all these years, I, I imagined getting the belt put on me and imagined just touching the belt and, and being a champion in the UFC. But when it actually happened, it, it was, uh, it felt like a dream. It felt better than I can even, I, I could have ever thought it felt like, and it felt right. It didn't feel, you know, it felt like I earned it. It mm. felt like 12 years of work and, and it just really felt good, man. Uh, I've never felt anything like that. I just felt really accomplished and just proud of myself. You know, Amen. I, I don't know what else I, I, I can compare it to. Well, I mean, it's your journey, you know, and I think those are perfect. Uh, that seems to be, yeah, you felt very accomplished. It felt right. Um, and it's interesting that, it, that you say it felt like a dream because it was a, this was a dream of yours. So it's like, it would almost make sense that it felt that way, I guess, you know? Right. And, and a dream at, at times that has slipped away from me. And I didn't know if I was going to, you know, I just, in the back of my head, always, like, no matter what happened, I'm going to push through it and overcome and just have perseverance through anything. But, you know, still, some, some days are tough, man. Some days on the job are tough. I've lost big, big fights in the past. And, and going back home after losing a big fight, it's like, man, mm. will I ever really make, make this a reality? And, dude, when that goal touched my skin, man, I just knew, like, all those years, bro, all those years. Yeah, it's so interesting, man. I got a, actually got a message from Michael Bisping the other night, and he said, man, he did it, you know, Uh because I've been messaging him the week before, just asking about the fights, and and no one, it seems, uh, I was looking at some information online, and it said that no one has had a longer route from their first fight to a belt than uh, Bisping had twenty six fights, and I guess for you it was right. twenty two, um, and uh, and he said a couple nice things, um, just such supportive things that he could really relate to your journey, man. Uh, do you feel like the journey is over? Where do you find motivation and inspiration now? No, now it's, you know, what I have is a piece of the of the world championship. I have to unify the belt with Khabib. When I could, when I beat Khabib, then I'm on top of the mountain. You know, right, I, right now I'm on I'm on the edge. I got I got a few more steps to go. Once I beat Khabib, then then I'm on top of the mountain, and then it becomes about legacy. You know, wow. what can I what can I do differently than, than these other champions? Yeah, what can I do to separate myself in that category? There's levels to it, man. There's levels to it for sure. Yeah. But you're a champion, man, and that's uh, and they can never take it away from you, man. Um, congratulations so much, and, uh, and and tell me about your organization one more time, uh, Dustin, that you have there in uh, out of Lafayette, not a Coconut Creek. Yeah, yeah. Me and my wife have uh, the Good Fight Foundation. Mm -hmm. It's the GoodFightGroup dot com. If you want any info, but uh, we're just doing things around Acadiana and Southern Louisiana, trying to help out, trying to use my platform 
in, in the best way I can to make people, uh, you know, better in my community to better the, the every, anything we can do, you know, we're not set to one specific goal. We do all types of things, but this next goal we have, we're building a, a playground uh, for disabled children at an elementary school. And I'm really, really excited to do that. That's awesome, man. We're going to go online and make a, uh, and make a donation right after this. And, um, and, uh, and yeah, man, it'd be great if you and I know you and I have talked about over the past year about doing maybe a comedy show and doing some f- fundraising efforts together down there in uh, in South Louisiana. And and if you're still willing to do that, man, I I'd love to be able to uh, you know for us to see that see that to uh, fruition. Bro, I'm 100 percent down. I can start working on it if you want to, man. It'll be great. I think you can really have a, a huge turnout, and we can get some some good stuff going for for South Louisiana. Yeah, I think so too, man. We can start local. I love it. Uh, the champ, dude. Congratulations, brother. Thank you, Theo, man. It was awesome to see you out there in the crowd, bro. Dude, I was so excited, bro. I was going to fucking... If anybody jumped in, I was jumping in, you know? You know, I, I knew you had my back. Man. Oh, I knew yeah, it. dog. Look, I was going to get knocked the fuck out, boy. I was ready to get knocked out. I even brought a pillow in my bag. <laughs> oh. So I was ready, man. Congratulations, champ. Enjoy your time with your family. Thank you so much, Theo, brother. Good to hear from you. All right, you too, man. Have a good day. Yep.